So lesson 20 from the book of Acts, according to Community Bible Study Curriculum, the ministry in the city of Ephesus. So day one, Acts 19, 1 to 7, Paul meets some of the disciples of the John the Baptist. So then what happens, we'll see. Then at the synagogue, he preaches for about three months, but the response was mixed. Then he says, all Asia, Asia means Asia Minor, the Turkey, heard the gospel. Then uh, miracles in Ephesus. God did extraordinary miracles. We will look at that. Then the believers burned their old occult magic books, which was worth about 50,000 silver coins. So these are some of the things we read in a, about the ministry in Ephesus. So Paul first time went to Ephesus, but he got diverted to Troas. The second time he stayed, only for a brief time, and left Priscilla and Aquila, who laid the foundations for a future work there. There he came to Ephesus as he had promised. So the third attempt, so we see that Paul stayed for a long time, that is two years. So usually he used to stay three months, four months, two months. Most of the time he'll be thrown out of the city. So here he stayed for two years. So the first incident we see is he met disciples of John the Baptist. So they must have received the baptism of John and they have not received the baptism of Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. So here we see they started speaking in tongues. So speaking in tongues happens Acts chapter 2 in the on the day of Pentecost. Again when there was an opening in Samaria it happens. Then there was an opening among the Gentiles, that is in the house of Cornelius, it happens. So then here with the disciples of John the Baptist. So almost four occasions we read this. And every occasion is a new frontier open. So we have to see from that perspective. First occasion it was the birthday of the church. So after the ascension, the Holy Spirit was given to the church. So the Holy Spirit will indwell in the lives of the people and in the church until Lord comes again. So that was the indication on the day of Pentecost. So then it was a sign for the believers in Samaria that they are also part of that body of Christ. So the Samaritans were accepted or were baptized into the body of Christ and it was given, the sign was given. Again we see the Cornelius. Cornelius, the Gentiles, the Romans were also become part of the body of Christ. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So the integration of one man. So again, here we see those who are baptized by John. So it was according to the Old Testament order. It was not according to the new covenant. So it was part of the old covenant. It was a radical decision by John the Baptist to give baptism. So the Jewish people who are waiting for Messiah, so they received the Holy Spirit. So they were not part of the mainline Jewish community. They were just a yeah, cult group or a sect. So all these cases we see, God integrated all of them into the body of Christ. The Jewish believers, the Gentile believers, the Samaritans who were despised by the Jewish pe people and the uh, disciples of John the Baptist who were considered as Nazarene sect 
or a cult which was not approved by the Jewish people. So in all these four occasions we see God is integrating people from various backgrounds and we become one body. So all the dividing wall of hostility is removed. So that was approved or that was demonstrated by a sign. The sign was speaking in tongues. So it is not a sign for all believers. So it was given as a sign for especially for those two who came. So as a gift, yeah, that is operates because First Corinthians 12, we can see the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So one of the gifts is tongues. So that, that has several applications. We are not going into that. So that is also there. But the sign, when you talk about sign, these are the four times the signs were exhibited. So all the other time, it is the gift of the Holy Spirit that people speak in tongues. So then people also say, especially the scholars, Paul wrote the letters of 1st and 2nd Corinthians when he was staying in Ephesus. So not only he was preaching, but he was also writing letters to the uh, believers. So Paul's ministry to Jews in the city of Ephesus was for about three months. So he boldly in the synagogue spoke. That means about 12 Saturdays. Few Jewish people were hardened and they did not believe. So they heard it again and again that Jesus as Messiah, they did not believe. Then they became stubborn. They blasphemed against the Lord. And also they spoke evil about the way before the murder. So it was not silent animosity. They demonstrated their hatred by speaking evil in public forums. So Paul withdrew from Jewish people and started to minister to Gentiles. So this is a very important turning point in the history of missions and in the life of Paul. So a hall of tyrants. So we have to see the context. Paul had almost been in ministry for about 30 years. So he spoke in Damascus, he spoke in Jerusalem, he spoke in Tarsus, he did ministry in Antioch. Then he went on the journey to Derby, Lystra, then other places, Galatia region, then uh, all those places, Macedonian region, and also the Euro Philippines. So now, with all this experience in ministry as a church planter, as an evangelist, God brings him to the city of Ephesus. He was about 54 years old. And uh, maybe this was a final. Uh, we can say when he run the marathon race, they run steadily. But in the last phase, they run fast. So if life is taken as a run, so Paul ran steadily various places. Now, he must have thought that days are numbered. So now he wanted to do optimally, very, very important strategically, important thing in mission strategy. So in Ephesus, he used a new strategy. So how he used a new strategy? He used a public hall to preach. So it was, uh, it is interesting. It is a uh, uh, we can say that uh, who did not have any fatigue or uh, he was not at all tired. It could be two years daily means minimum 500 days. It could be 600 days or even more. So we can exclude the Sabbath days. And then it is maybe six days a week or five days a week, five hours. So it would have been 500 to 600 days. That means he spoke for nearly 2,500 to 3,000 hours. What did he speak? So he would not have spoken the same thing again and again. So he must have got some regular students who were there listening to him daily. So we don't know what he spoke. So at that time, he didn't have, he didn't have a printed Bible like what we have, what we carry today in our mobile phones or in our 
printed form. So if I had the Bible, if Paul would have had the Bible like us, maybe he could have done an explicit preaching from Genesis to Revelation. It was not there. So the scrolls may be there, but he would not have all the scrolls because he, it is not possible to carry along everywhere that scrolls. So it must be mostly from memory. So how he did it is an amazing thing. So he had the guts, he had the courage to speak for nearly 2,500 hours daily to public, in public, to people. So that might have been the same people. Some of them might have been there for five days, 20 days, 15 days, or one month, or even six months. Some would have come and gone immediately. So he had to address a variety of con congregation or participants but it was very effective. So the teaching method. So Paul would have used different styles of ministry. So preaching, teaching. So when we, uh, Luke writes, he says, he was proving, proving that Jesus is the Messiah that he used among the Jewish people. All the people who were expecting the Messiah, all the people who were expecting God to come, or God to intervene in the history, then persuading, so that means people may know the truth, are grasping the truth, but they were not willing to accept it as truth. So persuading them, then dialoguing. So as he dialogued in the ethics, so you are believing in a God whose name is not known, so I announced that. So in that way, he dialogued. He found ways and means or opportunities to preach the gospel, the point of reference, point of commonality. So where redemption attitude, then debate. So he debated ideas. Is resurrection possible? Can God become man? So these are some of the questions philosophers would have raised. Then discuss, discussion about maybe the family matters the lifestyle matters, ethics. So then he argued with me. So he used several faces. So maybe one day he must have been preaching because most of them are strangers. So teaching means there are people who were willing to learn and they were becoming disciples. Proving means there could have been Jewish people or God-fearers who wanted to know about Christ. So persuading. So Jewish people, Gentiles who were considering Christ, but they were not made, able to take a decision. So giving them confidence to take decision, dialoguing, that means philosophers, people of other religions, so who thought differently. So debating, debating again, the people with different ideas, the discussion, discussion about what matters for life, arguing. So when we talk about missions, we have to do all this. So there may be specialists who do certain things. But in our day-to-day -day ministry, as we talk with people, so as we have conversation with, with people, so we may have to use different methods for different contexts, different audience. So we have to know who the people are what they believe. So what is running in their mind? What is brooding in their mind? That we have to understand. So then, Paul, instead of preaching in synagogue, he took a hall of tyrants. So it was not a Bible college. It was not a chapel in the Bible college. It was not a seminary. Probably it was not a religious place. So it could have been a hall that uh, people used to travel, the philosophers used to travel at that time. So itinerant preachers used to travel. So they were from Athens and other places they go and teach. So it could have been a public hall, a part of an institution, so which teaches that. So then he chose his timing is interesting. See, in those times people used to work in the morning. So in the cool time in the morning. So early morning, 6 to 11, they used to work. 
and they take rest for 11 to 4 then again resume the work at four so paul used the rest time of the community so when the shops were closed maybe the institutions were closed so most of the people used to take rest in their afternoons so there may be travelers who were in the city so after the business hours they could be free from 11 to 4 so they will say okay let us do something exciting in the city so they will come to this hall to hear paul so paul was very very strange so like lord jesus christ went to the village in samaria to meet one samaritan woman so his audience was one woman and he went in the hot noon time because he knew that he could meet her only at that point of time so in the same way here paul uses the same idea so when will people be available so when can more people gather so that helped him to take a right decision so he did not say everybody is working from morning 6 to 11 i also would work as a teacher as a philosopher from 6 to 11 no so some people say he what as a tent maker from morning 6 to 11 then 11 to 4 he gave lecture then again 4 to 6 he again what so that could have been his pattern we are not sure but what we see is so he tailored his ministry and mission according to the need of the people availability of the people so i was reading one missionary biography of uh, sd ponraj so he was working in gujarat where maybe 35 40 years ago so that time as a young missionary the three or four people they used to go to villages every morning to preach the gospel so the villagers would say come in the evening come in the evening they did not understand why they were saying come in the evening so because in the morning the villagers usually go to work so only in the evening they will be free so they said you come when we are free so the ponraj writes so for about 2 years we did not understand this logic then we realized this was the reason then they started going in the evening. there was a remarkable turnover so earlier they went to preach but there was no audience but now the audience was always there and uh, he gives us how many churches were planted all those statistics so it is amazing so appropriate time when people are available people are willing to listen people are in a frame of mind to listen so we have to choose that then the target audience so the period was they said it is about uh, 53 to 54 ad and uh, all the residents of asia asia minor hear the word that is what acts 1910 says so his focus was northeast coast of mediterranean sea comprising most of modern day turkey the estimated population was about 2 million people that is 20 lakhs so two years daily fires then he says all the residents of asia minor about 20 lakh people hear the gospel it's amazing so how can we reach to 20 lakh people in two years time so with only one pulpit so one flat so today we have digital platforms where we can get to 2 million hits in some viral videos easily in matter of hours so it was a viral preach so viral spread of the gospel so it is sometimes unimaginable how this man of god paul was strategic in his thinking how efficient was his methods and how confident assertion he makes 
that all the population, nearly 2 million people, 20 lakh people, hear the gospel. So, we have to think like Paul. How to create strategy that can touch thousands, millions of people. So, it was a very creative strategy. Then, in Ephesus, Lord confirmed the ministry of Paul with extraordinary miracles. So, it was God's amazing grace. We will be seeing the miracles, how it happened, why it happened. Then, the impact also created copycat ministries. So, Paul preached and demons had to run away, flee away because some demon possessed also could have been in the congregation. So, the Jewish high priest son, Skeva, sons, they tried to do what Paul was doing. And they were bruised. They had to flee naked because the demons kicked them. So, then we see the result, end result, the believers, they brought all the books or the elements they used for practicing sorcery. So it could be the cards, the dice, then the pictures, the arts, the charms, everything they brought. It was worth about 50,000 silver coins. So it means 50,000 days of labor, because they approximately say one silver coin is one day labor cost. So if we say 500 rupees is one day labor cost, we can 50,000 into 500 rupees. So that was the cost of the material they were willing to throw it. It was trashed because they cannot resell it. If they could have resold it, they could have got some. But they decided it should be burnt because other people should not be spoiled. They were in the wrong path. So they should not guide other people in the wrong direction. So they burnt it. So the preaching in the hall of tyrants had multiple effect. So extraordinary miracles. How, what do we mean by extraordinary miracles? Handkerchiefs and aprons could keep the sick and drive out in the service. So maybe the sweat towels, they say, which they use for work or whatever. So whatever Paul used could be used for healing the sick. Maybe they took it to their villages, took it to other places. And when they placed on the sick people or the people who were demon possessed, they were delivered. So it was a marvelous thing. It was similar to what happened in Jerusalem when shadow of Peter could heal people. So they will bring the sick people from all over Judea. They will be waiting for Peter to pass through. When Peter passed, his shadow will fall on the sick people. They will be healed. So it will be also like the woman touching the hem of Lord's garment. So we see that she thought that if I touch, so I'll be healed. So it was a superstitious touch or a touch of faith. So maybe for her it was a superstitious touch, but Lord saw it as a touch of faith. So when he said, the power has gone out of me. So that doesn't mean that everybody who came and touched the garment of Jesus. So no. So it was one instance. So that should not become a yeah, normal practice. That should not perpetuate. So maybe they had a feeble faith and God honored the faith. So these people had feeble faith. So they did not understand the word of God thoroughly. They did not understand the gospel. But they thought gospel has power. So God's word has power. God's man has power. So that power could be transmitted through the handkerchiefs and aprons. So God ordered the feeble faith. But that doesn't mean that they have to live with that feeble faith. 
God is not pleased by immature believers who refuse to grow out of such feeble faith. So, it may be a beginning, it may be a first step, it may be a feeble step, but that should not be the ultimate thing. So, they have to grow into spiritual maturity. So, it was unusual then it was, uh, it, that it was a rare rather than being normal. So, we don't read about other apostles doing that. So, or Timothy or Titus or Silas or other leaders practicing such things. So it happened because God ordained it. So it, it was one time aspect that happened in the Ephesus. So then the sons of Skip, so he had several Skivas, who had se seven sons, and they were observing Paul. Observing Paul, that God's power was Evident. Paul's, God's power was evident when Paul used the name of Lord Jesus. So then they must have understood even lay people carrying the kerchief or aprons of uh, Paul, they were healed. So that means the name of Jesus is extraordinary. It's powerful. So what they do, the Jewish young people, they attempted to cast out demons using the name of Lord Jesus Christ. And they did not know Lord Jesus Christ. So they were not disciples of Lord Jesus Christ. They were not followers of Lord Jesus Christ. But they simply used the name of Lord Jesus Christ. So what happened is the demons responded violently. So they said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. And who are you? So, not only really that, they not only protested, they behaved violently. They were not able. So, these seven young men were not able to control the ferocious attitude of the demon possessed. So, they were beaten. They had to flee naked. So, that means it was a very sad situation, and bad situation, and people must have fled. So this was known throughout the town. So we will see that later. So known by God and known in it. So what happens is, the demon says, Jesus I know. Obviously they know the Son of God. Then they say, Paul I know. So how do they know Paul? And they don't know these fellows. So, known by God. If you are known by God, you are known in hell loves. So, Lord Jesus Christ is the good shepherd. He knows the sheep. He knows the name of sheep. When we are known by God, we are known by Satan and the demons. So, because they know that Lord indwells in us. We carry the presence of God. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So they fear the name of Lord Jesus Christ. They tremble at the name of Lord Jesus Christ. So whether we realize God's power in our life or not, whether we recognize God's power in our life, our presence in our life, but Satan, his fallen angels, definitely recognize God's presence in our lives. So then, if you are known by God, we are known in heaven. So Lord sent the 70 people two by two. They went, they healed the sick, the demons were cast out. So they came back. They were happy. They were really happy because the demons obeyed the name of Lord Jesus Christ. So for them, the result, the consequence was evident where they can see they are about. Obviously, they had a selfish undercurrent. So the, the 70 thought they are about. 
So they fear the name of Jesus, not these disciples. But they fear, the Satan and his army fear the name of Jesus. But they thought they were, the demons fear them because they were casting out in the name of Jesus. So what the Lord said is, don't be happy about that. Don't rejoice on this. Rejoice, your names are written. So how the demons are cast out because your names are written. So that means you belong to the army of God. So you belong to the victorious army of God. So in the victorious army, the least soldier, the least of all soldiers have authority. So this authority has to be obeyed by the defeated army. That means the least in the army of God have authority over the greatest among the demons, including Satan. So that is the principle. So even in the world, that is the principle. The defeated army general has to obey the orders of the least person, least sipai in the army. So there was no need for the general of the winning army to command the general of the defeated army. The least of the army of the victorious will be sufficient to command or demand anything from the defeated army general. It applies here. So, Lord said to the disciples, so don't be deceived that demons are obeying. So, the reason is your names are written. So, we have to understand it in that context because in Matthew, Lord said, people will come and say, we have cast out demons in your name, we did miracles in your name, but the Lord said, I will know you not. So that means their names are not written in them. So casting demons is not the qualification. So names written in heaven matters the most. So whether we cast out demons or not, that is not the important thing. The important thing is our names are written in the book of life. So known by God and known in heaven and known or given. Yes, when we carry the presence of God, when our behavior is light and soft, so people recognize by comparing us or understanding that we are disciples of Lord Jesus Christ. That's what happened in Acts 11 26. So they wanted to name the band of people who behave differently and who did things which are differently, who follow a value system that is different. And they searched and found out they behave like Lord Jesus Christ. So they called them Christians. So when you look at the world, what happens? The world searches for good people, righteous people, and they always point to Lord Jesus Christ. Even like people like Mahatma Gandhi and Nelson Mandela. So they will say, oh, he lived like Christ. Because Lord Jesus Christ is the ultimate personality. And nobody could be compared to him. So if somebody achieves good moral standing or a righteous life, they point that they are like that. So Christians actually bear the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Have to be witnesses, light and salt, and known in hell. So we are known by God, known in heaven, known on earth, and known in hell. So when we come to Lord Jesus Christ, so it is not just a local church affair. It has repercussions in heavens and thunders in hell. So that is a great change that happens. Because one, when one sinner repents, there is great celebration in hell. 
So heaven rejoices. So what happens in hell? So there is sadness because they have lost one more person. So the hell knows. So this person has become follower of Lord Jesus. We have to be careful with this one. They may attack us, but they will know that they cannot win over us because Lord is with us. We can overcome all those troubles and tribulations. So known by God, known everywhere. The sons of Skeva, they were not known by God. So they were not recognized by demons. So they had to be, they had to experience violence in the hands of demon possessed people. Mm -hmm. So then the evil spirits overpowering sons of Skeva became the talk of the town in Ephesus. Because it was, it could have been a public meeting. So when they ran naked in the streets, so they must have wondered what had happened, what had happened. So the whole town started talking. So what has happened? So why this happened? So there was fear and they exalted the name of Lord Jesus. So even in that, God was glorified. So then Pharaoh's army was drowned in the Red Sea. Moses in his song says, God was glorified. So God's power and might is exhibited because they tried to use the name of Lord Jesus Christ in vain. So they were summarily defeated. So this defeat was apparent. Maybe they would have, the sons of Keva would have been prominent in the society, or they might have been acting that they were very prominent, they were very powerful. But now they see that these people are defeated. The town people see that these people were defeated. So what happens? The people understood, even the believers who were already converted to Jesus, saw the name of God exalted. So even those who were believers may have some old books in their homes, magic charms, formula for sorcery and other items. So now they made a clear break from the past life. Now they decided to burn it in public. It was not in their homes. It was done in public. So there were people, all the magicians, the sorcery practitioners, they all came together and threw that. So Paul did not ask them to do it. So Paul did not preach, bring all those things and put it in the bonfire, which we will have today, we know. So it was done by their own accord. So nobody thought. So this is very important. So it has to come, the initiative has to come from them. So they saw the power of God, they experienced the power of God, and they decided on their own to do that. So it was a huge economic loss for them. Maybe they were practicing for 10 years or 20 years or 30 years. They would have invested so much in that. So now they were willing to give it off. They were willing to let it go. So we see that. So when we see this happen, so later riots happen. We will be seeing the next week how the Ephesus city, there were riots. So these three important things are, we see that. Hall of Tyrannus strategy is very important when you consider about missions. How public proclamation of gospel in a public space, that means secular space. And it was done wisely by Paul. And he had the guts and capacity to speak for maybe 2,500 hours. The strength and stamina of Paul when he was 
about 54 years of age so it is amazing so then the timing how he chose the time so many times we don't choose the right time so many pastors says people don't come this meeting that meeting so they they lament instead of understanding what is the best time for people to join and accordingly plan the events so the hall of tyrants strategy of paul teaches us many things so god did extraordinary miracles so extraordinary miracles are extraordinary it is not common so there are many miracles done by lord jesus christ many miracles done by apostles but some are marked as extraordinary so that need not be repeated all the time it can be repeated. so we will not say it can never be done it can be done but it is not the norm so god may at some extraordinary situations can do extraordinary miracles for his own glory so we should not have feeble faith to claim that extraordinary miracles are expect extraordinary miracles all the time so already i gave the example of the woman who touched lord jesus christ hem of the garment so there are many people touching lord jesus but nothing happened so this is an extraordinary miracle so it did not happen again in the lord jesus christ time so extraordinary miracles are extraordinary so miracles god can do any miracle by any means but we should not be miracle tasters we should not be always miracle seekers so we have to learn to walk by faith then the sons of sceva they are very great examples so who try to imitate god's work it's a clear warning they cannot do god's work without having relationship with god so they violated the rule old testament law because they were jewish people they knew the 10 commandments so the 10 commandment forbids anybody taking the name of god in vain so they were taking the name of son of god in vain so they were punished they were punished by demons because they were irritated they were angry and they were declaring lord jesus i know paul i know but who are you? so we have to understand relationship is very important if you don't have any relationship with god so we are nobody so when we have relationship with god we are known by god we are known in heaven we are known on earth we are known in Have. so that is a great thing so we are known everywhere so it is it may be a simple thing telling the sinner's prayer and accepting the lord in a very remote place unknown place in the corner of a park or in the corner of a building or in kitchen or in any closed room but that has tremendous consequences so that is reflected in heaven celebration that is creates an expectation in the minds of the people around us to behave like christ and satan is worried demons are terrified because one or two person have joined the army of the lord so paul's ministry in ephesus is an amazing thing that strategically we have to think differently and in terms of understanding miracles understanding the john the baptist baptism and also the demon possessed people beating up those who use the name of lord jesus christ in vain mm-hmm.